Hi, I'm Alistair, and in this video I'm going to teach you how to make this haunted magic mirror. Ooh. Uh, so what is it? Well, it's a normal mirror at the moment. You can see it's in a particularly attractive frame. Uh, but if I gaze in it to look at my beautiful visage, uh, as I moment there for a couple of seconds, ah! Slightly creepy message appears. Uh, I see you, and there's sort of blood drops uh, appearing down the screen. Um, now, if I turn my attention away from the mirror to go and rush and tell my friends, hey guys, there's a creepy mirror in here, uh, by the time they're going to see it, it is completely back to normal again, though. So, how can you make one of these yourselves? Well, as you might have already guessed, this is not actually a haunted mirror at all. What it is, is a computer monitor uh, that has had a wooden frame wrapped around the outside. So, I started off with a, an old PC monitor here. I've um, taken out the plastic shell that it came in. And instead what I've done is I've mounted this wooden frame on the outside. So that's just the back of a regular computer monitor. It's got a VGA input and it's got a power connector as well. And now on the front of the monitor screen, I've placed some uh, reflective mirror film like this. And the way this works is it is not completely reflective though. When there is... Uh, when the monitor is off, or as it is at the moment, when the monitor is just displaying a black screen, what happens is the majority of light you can see is being reflected off the front surface of that mirror sheet back at you. When uh, the image is displayed on the monitor behind, though, some of that image uh, comes through. So you can get different levels of reflectivity. This one is 80% um, reflective. I think I tried it with 90% uh, and 99% reflective film as well. And what you'll find is what works best for you will depend on what the other ambient lighting in your room is like. Um, if you choose a value that is too high, what you'll find is it looks really, really like a mirror when the monitor is off, but you won't be able to see the image so well behind um, because there won't be enough transmittance through the surface. If you choose a value that's too low, you'll be able to see the uh, image really well that's displayed on the monitor, but it won't look so much like a mirror when the monitor's black because you're not getting enough bounce back. So like I say, I'm using 80% and that seemed to work out um, pretty well for me. So that's got you a monitor that looks a bit like a mirror when it's off, and when it's on, it still looks a bit like a mirror, but it also can um, display anything you want. It can display text or an animation or whatever. Now, I've actually written, uh, this is a little program which I've written in Unity. Uh, it's a bit like an animation, really, but it responds to two keyboard button presses. So uh, when I press A, the animation starts, the text fades in, and the blood drips down and everything. And when I press uh, Z, uh, the animation stops, the text goes away and everything. So it's like a controllable animation really, but you could actually make this anything you want. You could make it a still image, you could make it a PowerPoint show or something like that. Um, because this is just a normal computer monitor connected to a PC. However, you probably don't want, uh, you know, if you wanted to use this in an escape room, you probably wouldn't want the player to come along and press the A or Z key on a keyboard to make it activated. Um, what you'd want is something like a uh, PIR sensor on the top that detected when someone was standing close by or maybe a button that has to be pressed or a pressure plate on the floor so that when someone was standing in front of the mirror uh, this was detected and started automatically. And those are the kind of sensor inputs that we'd normally do with an Arduino. So I then took it a bit of a step further and I wrote an Arduino program that's going to send that A or Z character uh, through a USB serial connection, so the normal way that you'd plug an Arduino in, and instead of displaying the A or Z on the serial monitor, I'm going to turn them into a keystroke uh, that the PC will um, interpret as if you'd pressed a button on the key, and that's going to start or stop the animation. Now the great thing about that is that I've made it so that you can um, interpret any keystroke sent from the serial monitor connection. So this is like having your Arduino be able to control any application. If you want to start or stop a video using a VLC player, for example, maybe, or if you want to, maybe you do have a PowerPoint slideshow and you want to advance through the slides based on an Arduino input, uh, that's what this program will let you do. 
So let me explain in a little bit more detail how that Arduino interface works, because that's really the interesting bit about this project, um, using an Arduino to send keystrokes to a PC that can control anything from a video playback on a monitor like this to any other application. So I've got a uh, Arduino Nano here, it's plugged in via a USB connection to my PC, and I've just got a simple button break out there that's connected to pin 2 and to ground. And that Arduino is running a sketch that looks like this. So uh, this is a very simple sketch and basically what it does to start with we define that trigger pin 2 that the button's uh, connected to and we also uh, define a boolean variable that's going to keep track of whether the button is currently being pressed down or not. Uh, we then initialize the serial interface at a speed of uh, 9600. That's what we're going to use uh, to send these keystrokes to the PC, that USB serial interface. And we'll also define the pin as a pull-up. So when the button is not being pressed, uh, that signal is going to be pulled up to a high voltage of 5 volts. When the button is pressed down, that's what's going to connect it to ground, and the button will read as a low signal, or 0 volts. Okay. And then in the main loop, uh, all we do is we take a read of that button pin, and if the button is currently, if the button reads low in this frame, that means that the button must be being pressed down. We'll then say, well, hang on, was it pressed in the last frame or not? If it wasn't pressed in the last frame, but it is now, that means it's just been pushed. And we want to send uh, a keystroke character of a lower case A to the serial link. Um, so the reason why we keep track of where the button was last frame is because we don't want to repeat that character every frame in which it's pressed. I just want to send it once when it's first pressed down uh, and then not again for every frame that's true. So we'll send uh, the character A and then we'll update the value of that boolean is pressed to true uh, so that in the next frame we'll know uh, whether to send it again or not. This else here, well that corresponds to the if here. So this else means that the digital read of this button was high in this frame, which means that the button's not being pressed at the moment. Um, if it was being pressed in the last frame though, and it's now not, that means it's just been released. So in that case we're going to send the lowercase character Z to the serial connection instead. Uh, and again we'll update the boolean. So that's all it is. It's um, code that basically just reads the button and as it is pressed the first time it sends an A, as it is released it sends a Z. Um, and I can show you that working uh, using the serial monitor connection. Uh, so you're probably familiar with using the, the serial monitor connection before. Uh, if I press down uh, you'll see the character A appear and when I release you'll get Z. A, Z, A, Z. Now that's all very well and the serial monitor is great if what you're trying to do is debug your program but it won't let you control other programs. So I'm going to close the serial monitor down again and instead I'm going to load up this little bridging client which I created. So I've called it a serial key mapper and what it does is much like the serial monitor it reads any incoming data that has arrived from the Arduino and what it'll do instead is if it corresponds to a single character like that A or Z it will trigger a keystroke on Windows corresponding to that keyboard. So instead of printing the character A on a serial monitor, it's actually going to send the character A uh, to any application that might be active at the moment. Uh, so just like on the serial monitor connection, you uh, choose what port you want to listen to. So I'm going to listen to port, port COM18. And remember in my Arduino code, I was uh, running at 9600 board, so that's important to match as well. And then if I click the enabled button, from now on, that's going to be listening for those inputs and it's going to translate them into keystrokes for any other application. Uh, so to demonstrate that, the easiest way to start with, probably, uh, if I just load up uh, Notepad like that and give it focus. And now when I press my button, I get A's and Z's in Notepad instead of a serial monitor. And this will work for uh, any application, in fact. So if I now load up um, Excel, for example, and give that focus, and now when I press AZ, I'm entering into the cell of an Excel worksheet instead. 
So, back to the haunted, spooky, magic mirror. How might you want to activate that? Well, you probably don't want a button to press, but it's very easy to swap that sensor out for something like uh, one of these instead. This is a uh, floor pressure mat. Uh, you can buy them quite cheaply. They're sold as kind of burglar deterrents. You'd place them uh, under a carpet or under a rug or something like that. And when you press on them, um, it closes a connection. So if you simply uh, replace the pin to and ground wires that were going to that little button component uh, with two wires to one of these instead. And what you now find is if you place this on the floor in front of the mirror and you step on it, which I will simulate by just pressing down on it for now, uh, you'll see my PC serial monitor, or the serial mapper rather, gets the character zero, which it then sends to my application which is running the magic mirror, which makes the animation start. Uh, when I release my hand from the monitor, it sends the character Z, uh, which is interpreted into a keystroke, which is received by the application, which makes the monitor stop. Uh, and again, if I press the pressure plate down, uh, I can start up again. So um, this is just one example. You can really do this uh, lots of different ways. You could have lots of different sensors. Uh, and you can not only have two keystrokes uh, on and off, you can send all manner of different uh, information from your Arduino and convert it into keystrokes to convert any uh, to control any kind of application. Uh, so hopefully you'll have some ideas of um, what to play with with that, whether they're using a mirror or, or something else. Um, if you've got any comments or suggestions or questions, uh, please let me know in the comments below. I'll put links to the uh, serial key mapper. Uh, and the uh, Unity application I actually use here as well. I'll put up on my uh, Patreon page so you can find them there. And thanks very much for watching. Bye.